Someone wants to know, why does the Old Testament display a God who orders violence? Uh, it's one of those questions that, as Christians, we get criticized all the time by those who do not believe in the Christian faith, that the Old Testament displays a God of vengeance and hate and warfare, and that the New Testament is different, maybe uh, at least trying to implicate that the God of the New Testament is different from the God of the Old Testament. We face all kinds of criticism over the question of the violence that the God of the Old Testament seems to order. Well, there's no escaping the fact that God in the Old Testament ordered the execution of men and women and children from the Canaanite religion. The Canaanites were the occupants with many subgroups, the occupants of the promised land. Their religion, not the people per se, but their religion was so contrary to monotheism, the fact that there's one God and one God only, that it became a political and a cultural problem for the, for the Israelites searching for the promised land. God had made a covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob, and eventually with uh, the whole of the Old Testament, that he would make of them a great nation, that those who bless them, he will bless. Those who curse them, he will curse. The number one enemy of the Israelites coming out of Egypt, the number one enemy or barrier to the promised land were the Canaanites. Now the Canaanite religion was a disgusting religion. There's absolutely no way I could describe in intimate detail the kinds of practices that uh, the Canaanites pushed and observed and wanted the Israelites to do as well. Incest, rape, infidelity, multi uh, uh, marriages, many polygamists and, and celebrating uh, prostitutes who were religious prostitutes. But at the top of the list of the things that defiled the Canaanites was the sacrifice of children. Children were sacrificed as part of their culture. It was a normal ongoing thing for the Canaanites to offer to their god, Moloch, the sacrifice of small children, babies, infants. Kind of brings to mind the day in which we're living today, where we sacrifice our babies for the sake of convenience with abortion, with uh, up to nine months. We say that's horrible. Anybody who's ever observed it says it's horrible. Anybody who's ever witnessed one says it's horrible. Yet it's a common practice in our culture today to sacrifice to Moloch our children and our babies. Well, this was a part of their culture as well. So it was the Canaanite religion that became the enemy of God. And so when God ordered warfare with the Canaanites, he told the Israelites there to spare none of them. And wherever the Israelites disobeyed and allowed some to survive, that head of the serpent, so to speak, regrew its force, regrew its body, and would come back to haunt Israel because they did not obey God in eliminating all of those that he, that he ordered them to eliminate. Well, the question is raised about the children, about women and the children. Uh, was it, was, wasn't it vengeful for God to do such a thing? When you consider that bestiality and um, sexual orgies uh, and, and uh, all kinds of practices that were straight out of the pit of hell were part and parcel to the kind of people the Canaanites wanted the Israelites to become. God wanted to eliminate any possibility that the Canaanites would somehow intermarry with Israel and thus defile his covenant. The Old Testament is filled with examples of the people of God doing just that. 
where they formed religions uh, that were eclectic religions, where they were intermarrying with the Canaanites whom they refused to kill, the women, the children. Think about the possibility of, of why these children were eliminated as well. Why did God order the execution of small children? It's a tough question. And uh, Christians have a hard time answering this because we don't understand that the holiness of our God. He was protecting Israel, not only from the present danger, but the future danger as well. Those kids who lost their parents in warfare, those kids who knew that Israel had killed off their parents, those orphan children would grow up to hate Israel. We see it happening today. We see that the enemies of Israel today are children who have grown up, who have been taught to hate Israel. They would eventually become Israel's enemies. Well, in the Old Testament, the same thing is true. God was trying to protect Israel from the future of the children who grow up under this, this, this cloud of, of warfare that came from Israel to come back to haunt Israel and their, their right to existence. It's still going on today. You look at some of the peace accords that are going on, they're all wrapped in the history of the Old Testament because Israel refused to obey totally the orders that God had given them on the executions. Well, you know, also, this is a God who is a God of a covenant. He had an agreement with Israel, and he wanted to protect this agreement with laws that would be in place to represent his holiness, his view of sin, that we serve a holy God. I think today we don't have a good picture of that. We don't have a good view of the holiness of God. And so atheists today and those who are uh, contrary to the Christian faith, they have a heyday with this question. Why would this God order the execution of women and children along with the execution of, of their husbands and fathers? Well, I hope this helps you to understand a little bit more about the value of the covenant that God made with Israel. You know, the critics, are, are manyfold because they like, to, they like to separate the God of the Old Testament from the God of the New Testament as though there are two gods. It's the same God. The God of the Old Testament, the one who destroyed the earth under Noah, the one who ordered the purity of Israel from the Canaanites is the same one who sent his son to die on the cross in order to provide us a way to him, a way for our sins to be dealt with, our unholiness to be dealt with. That's what the work of the cross is all about. Well, I hope this at least in part answers the question for you. Hope this proves to be helpful. You know, Ask Dr. Betters is here for the purpose of answering questions from a biblical point of view as best we can. And uh, we want to inform you, want you to know that we are a listener or a viewer supported ministry and that we depend on you to help fund these broadcasts. So visit us at markinc.org and want to put a backslash in there, push donate, and hopefully you will become part of the support team of Ask Dr. Betters. Hope this answers your question. Hi, my name is Melissa Weisenfels, Executive Director here at Mark Inc. Ministries. Thank you so very much for your continued support of this video series. Ask Dr. Betters is not meant to be a substitute for professional counseling, but instead is designed to extract biblical principles around the questions being asked. We encourage you to seek professional counseling if needed.